Hey folks, your old pal Dash V here, and I'm gonna show you today how to actually swap out your plunger for something new, neat, and a little bit more pop. So we're gonna be working on monsters today, and if we come up closely here, you're gonna see that my monsters, I've already got a nice, neat uh, metal shooter plate on there. If you're gonna put on a new shooter plate or a new shooter rod itself, um, you're gonna need to actually obviously pull the shooter rod. Now, uh, for those of you who have never done a mod to your pinball table before, I would rate this one uh, an easy. Let's just get right into it. Now, in order to get access to the shooter rod, we are gonna need to take off the playfield glass and lift the playfield. So there are two latches to the left and right of the coin box in a stern. You go underneath, lift up and pull out, lift up and pull out. I'll do another video once I have this lifted up to show you what you're actually doing. But then you simply lift the bar, set it aside. I like to set it um, kind of next to. Reclose the coin door and I pull with my top two thumbs there and you just wanna kinda of gently slide the glass out. Be careful to have your hands on it. Depending on how your glass sits, it may come out easy or it might be a little bit more difficult. Set the glass aside. Now an important thing you'll notice, I'm not placing any tools or anything directly on the glass. If you've got multiple pinball machines, um, don't, I don't try to, I never set my tools on the play field. I never set my tools on the glass. Always make sure you got a little stool or a bench or something to the side where you can put both your pinball accessories and your tools. Also, as I've mentioned in other videos, strongly recommend that you consider getting tools specifically for working on your pinballs. That way you're not bringing in other dirt or uh, potentially damaging chemicals or components into contact with your pinball machine and playfield. So. Uh, for this particular exercise, you're going to need either needle nose pliers or vice grips. So now with the glass off, we can simply pull up the play field and we'll bring it forward slightly. We're going to set down, there's rails that we're going to set down on the bar here. And I'm going to show you uh, the technique. All right, now if we go inside and we take a look for a second, here's what we're basically gonna be doing. You see the rails to the left and to the right, these rails? Well, the back end of this play field has a bit of a metal sled, and so what we're gonna do is, we're gonna pull the play field forward to get the back onto those rails. Then we're gonna lift the play field up and set the top of this on the back box. All right. I'm gonna lift forward, and you'll hear it kind of set down. Do it slowly. Okay, that was supposed to happen. That was it. Coming up, the back end has got metal plates on the bottom of the play field. Those just went up over. There's a little bit of a, of a U. Uh, it went up over that and just set down into the track. Now, I can also peek underneath the seat. Yep, I'm on the track. Now I can actually lift the play field up. And an important thing to do before you do this is that you want to make sure to actually eject the balls. So now to eject the balls out of the trough, normally I would do this before even bothering to lift the play field up at all, but I'm doing it right now just so I can show you. There's a solenoid right underneath that flipper. This is the solenoid. Now when it ejects the ball into the trough, what it's doing is this is firing and it, the ball is sitting right there. There's a tray that all the balls sit in. The one that's gonna get loaded up next is sitting right there and you can just kind of see that just fires. So if I just fire that with my finger, it's going to launch the ball up into the play field. So I'll do that one more time. Now, what I'll usually do is when I'm not recording, I'll have a hand right here so I can catch it as the ball gets fired. I can grab it, stash it in my pocket, catch it, stash it in my pocket. If you were to lift the table without ejecting the balls, what's gonna happen is the balls will automatically roll out of here, go straight down the shooter lane, and if you're very unfortunate, it'll actually fly off the table and start hitting random objects. So you don't wanna just flip the table up with the balls inside, you're gonna do some damage. Now, you wanna be careful when you're removing the balls that there might be balls in other places of the play field than the trough. Uh, Ninja Turtles, for example, the balls, you're actually gonna have, if you've got a premium, four balls loaded in the turtle van. 
If you're doing something like a Star Trek Next Generation, there's going to be some balls loaded uh, in the back there as well. So you're going to want to actually on Bally Williams, most of them, Star Trek, Medieval Madness, Attack from Mars, they did a really good thing in the utilities. There's actually an eject test. You want to set it to open the coin door, go into the menu to utilities, go to the eject test, activate it, close the coin door, let all the balls get ejected onto the play field, grab them, pocket them, and then you can go ahead and operate your machine. So if in doubt, check your owner's manual, understand where the table's gonna have balls locked and loaded. You generally wanna make sure that all of those are out of the table and somewhere safe before you start working on the pin. If you're not entirely sure how many balls your table uh, takes, usually you can see that where the lockdown bar is once you've removed it or sometimes on the trough, they'll actually mark somewhere in here how many balls uh, need to be in the game. You should never load more balls than the game says that it's rated for, um, or you will have problems. And that is everything. Make sure that you count. Six, yep. Now we can lift the play field the rest of the way. We can set it directly on the back box. There is a lower play field in Munsters. You don't have to remove those smaller balls. They're not big enough to do any real kind of damage. While we're in here, I want to show you what is actually happening when you remove the lockdown bar. I put the lock bar, lockdown bar back on and locked it in place. You'll notice that there is a clamp here and a clamp here with a handle and a handle. So what happens is when you want to take this lock bar off, this top piece off, you'll open the coin door, you'll come in and flip and pull that part down, you'll flip and pull that part down, and then the locking bar comes right off. When you want to go to put it back on, make sure you insert the glass, put your lock bar down, and then you're going to just reach behind, latch that and push, latch that and push, and that is how you both remove and add the lockdown bar. This is for a stern. Bally Williams are different and I'll show that in a different video. So now with the play field up, we can take a look at the shooter rod assembly. Here's one of them that I've already removed from another game. This is ultimately just gonna come straight, just come straight out once we've undone all the pieces from it. But let's take a look at what we got. We have a rubber stopper, which actually is what makes contact with the ball. We've got a C-clamp, which we're gonna pull with our vice grip or needle nose. We've got a washer between the C-clamp and the spring. And then we've got another washer, another washer, and another spring, okay? You wanna not dry fire that too many times. I just wanna kind of show you everything in kind of totality. So a couple things we're gonna need to be careful of. We're gonna wanna make sure that we have this pulled back and we release the tension on that C-clamp before uh, we try to pull it out. Um, we're also gonna wanna make sure that once we have the stopper off and the C-clamp removed, you wanna be careful not to just shoot, not to just fire off your washer into the middle of the cabinet, that'll cause you some problems. So we're gonna wanna make sure to keep, keep tabs on one, two, three washers right? Washer on either side, springs in the middle, washer, C-clamp, and rubber gasket. So all these guys are going to come out uh, and they're going to have to go back in in the same order on the new shooter rod. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try to take the rubber gasket off. This can actually be the most challenging part, actually. I generally try to twist this and twist this. It'll come off slowly, but it will come off. Sometimes you might be able to, you want to be careful not to really bite at that but you might find that you wanna use a bit of a screwdriver 
What you want to be really careful of is you don't want to damage the rubber. You also don't want to slip with the screwdriver and damage the art blades. So I'm just using this to gently push. I'm pulling on the rubber as I just push the bottom. I don't know if you can see that, but I'm just gently pulling as I push. So I'm just kind of guiding it. I'm not pushing really super hard. Almost there. Now I can just set this aside. You really don't, you're, you're mostly pulling with this and you're just pushing with the screwdriver. You shouldn't be trying to push it off entirely with the screwdriver. You're really just using the screwdriver to release some of the tension on the end. So you wanna make sure, look at that, I didn't do any damage. All right, so now, set this guy down here. I'm gonna to wanna to pull the spring back. I grab it actually by the washer. And there's a C-clamp here that you're just gonna to wanna to grab. And I try to grab it by one of the sides and then I gently pull it off. I'll show you in just a second what this actually was. Rotate it if you need to, always work from the top. This is what the C-clamp looks like removed. You can see it looks kind of like a little letter C. Uh, both the tab in the middle, just behind the needle nose, that tab in the middle and the tabs on the side, those are all should sit well in the groove of the shooter rod once it's installed. So you can see what I mean by, you could try to pull it from the center and pull it straight back. That's gonna be a little bit more difficult. You're gonna have a little bit more resistance. Um, I recommend just gently pulling one side or the other, just a little bit loose and then pulling it up and out. But you gotta be careful because as you can see, the metal on this is not very thick. So if you're not careful, you can snap these. Um, you might wanna have a couple spares but if you go slow and careful, you shouldn't have any problems. Now, pay attention to what you're doing. Release the tension on the spring deliberately. You've got your washer, you've got your spring. I'm setting my pieces right here in the cabinet. Be careful of the giant magnet. <laughs> Taking off the other washer, and now the shooter rod just comes right out and you're all, you're all set. So, I'm gonna set that right there. We have the new shooter rod that we're gonna install. So I'm gonna take the spring and the washer and just put them right onto my new shooter rod. Insert the shooter rod through. We're gonna do washer, we're gonna do spring. This part gets a little bit tricky. I'm gonna have another washer and I'm gonna have the C-clamp and I need to apply some tension here. You wanna make sure that you're, I use my hip and I just hold the shooter rod in place pull this back, get some decent tension on there, and then I'm going to put the C-clamp in place by hand. Make sure that it's there. Like You should hear it snap a little bit, but just double check, look at it by your eyeball. There's a little groove. The middle part and both the ends should be right riding that groove, and you should be able to, to slide it around, and it should stay right within that groove. So, very nice. Now, getting the rubber piece on is pretty simple. Just want to keep this st stable with your hip. And I just twist it. I twist it back on. And it should go on fairly... Sometimes you'll have to really, really twist them. Sometimes they'll come off fairly... They'll come off and go on fairly easily. That one went on pretty easy. So we should be... We should be all set. That looks like it's going to get the job done. Now, I want to show you this as we bring it down. Notice what I talked about of there's metal plating 
on both sides. This metal plating is meant to ride this ramp. There is an end point here. You don't want to go over this end point or your whole play field will fall into the middle of your cabinet, which is generally bad. But I'm going to kind of show you what happens as you bring the play field down or by reverse what would happen if, while we were trying to uh, bring it up. Notice how this metal is supposed to slide along this rail. Or if we were bring it up, we'd stop it right there and we would set it against the back box. So that's what's actually happening when you do that. So now we're gonna go ahead and set this back down. Set this down on the rails right here where the lockdown bar would normally be. One of the things that uh, Stern has done on some of the newer tables, which I really like, is there's actually, uh, on some of them, Munsters does not have this, but on some of the newer ones, there's actually a handle in the back, which is nice. There is not a handle on the back of Munster, so you want to be careful. If you don't have a handle here, lift by the bottom of the play field because you saw how there was that, that uh, stopper up at the front of the rail. There's a stopper at the back of the rail too. So in order to actually get the play field back, you're going to have to lift it up. But be careful because you don't want to lift it up by a rail. You don't want to lift it up by the back box. You want to actually put your hand underneath and catch the wood of the play field. And you want to just lift it up slightly, about an inch or two and then put that metal rail on the top of the back lip. And then you'll come up to the front again. Grab by the handrails, and you're just gonna gently slide back. Hold it by the middle of the apron, and let it kind of sit. There are two little brackets that'll settle down when you put it in the right spot. Uh, we wanna put the balls back in. I try to wipe them off. That way I'm not getting any of my hand oils or anything like that on there. Excellent. All the balls are loaded. Put the glass back on. Place the lockdown bar. Latch it like I showed you. And now you're ready to play some pinball. And here's what the shooter rod looks like installed. I think it's kind of cool. I think it adds quite a bit more personality. <laughs> Raven. Now it's time to uh, test it out. See what we get. See how well I can play one handed. Not too well. And there you go. We're all set. I hope you guys uh, learned something with this and got a little bit of confidence. Modding pinballs can be almost as fun, sometimes more fun than actually playing them. So be bold, figure out ways to customize your machine. This is probably one of the easiest mods that you can do and it'll give you some familiarity with removing the balls, lifting the play field, setting the play field back down. Um, as long as you're careful and you're patient, there's not really a lot of damage you can do with this kind of a mod. So, and they look, really cool and they can be a lot of fun so take care